My name is Dan Carrier and I work over a newspaper called The Camden New Journal. For a very long time um, I've been hearing stuff from Cecil Sharp House about the history of the Kennedy Hall and the history of this building um, and I have been looking forward very much to meeting Jim Diamond who is a uh, painting conservator uh, who is, uh, whose job it is to look after this incredible mural behind us. Tell me about the mural. So Ivan Hitchin, well, so let's start off with Ivan. This was commissioned in 1951. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Um, and who was Ivan? What is he, a famous muralist of the mid-20th century? No, this, or? He, he, was, he was a painter very much of the mid-20th century school. If you look at his, his paintings are abstract. They're heavily influenced by what was going on in, on the continent. You can see it's quite... Um, Picasso-esque in a way, but if you look, it's typically British in that there's an awful lot of figurative elements to it. So he hasn't gone full abstract. He's gone, he, they, it looks abstract at first view, but then if you look at it, there's lots of figures, um, there's horses, there's people playing instruments, people dancing. It's very English in a way. It's very kind of pastoral. One of the most important aims of it, and I think the brief that Hitchens perhaps was set was not to distract from the dancing so that people wouldn't fall over while they were <laughs> dancing and it ruined the social dance so it had to not take over it had to be abstract and it had to be something that would reflect the sort of the, the movement but not sort of I mean, leap out at you um, tell me about the production of it originally when hitchens first first made this because he, he didn't paint it in situ did he he, he painted it in his studio, and I believe in his garden. And he, I think he must have had it constructed in such a way that he could work on the whole thing in his, where he worked, in his studio. But then it would have been brought here in sections and mounted by a professional art um, engineers, they are almost, aren't they? And the condition it's in now, it's been up there for for, you know, the best part of 70-odd years now, yeah. so what state is it in? Large, large parts of it are in really surprisingly good condition, but it has suffered um, a catastrophic damage in two sections on the left-hand side. It got wet in a flood from above, I believe it was a kitchen flood, in early 1990s. And the problem with water getting behind a painting is that the canvas shrinks and paint layers are very rigid, can't shrink, no longer room for them, and they blister and they flake. So that's what, there's two whole sections where the majority of our work while we've been here for the last three weeks is fixing those <coughs> sections back down so we don't lose any paint. Okay, the phrase we always have in our head is the artist's original intention. Right. So that's what we're trying to preserve is the artist's original intention. And anything which gets in the way of that we, we would then look at with a view to um, taking dirt layers off, taking discoloured varnish layers off. The artist's original materials are what we're trying to conserve. It's so beautiful close up, isn't it? Would he have used? Would he have used? He would have used brushes rather than because it looks almost like he's used some sort of. I think he would have used huge flats, yeah. huge flat brushes. That would be my take on right. it. It's not not a spray coating. It's, no. it's it is brushed. It's got a very brushy texture. And you he can would see the you know sort of. Yeah. gestural elements to it. And he would have obviously sketched this all out first. And there was a, sketch, there was a, a, yeah, a very detailed book. plan. Yeah, a right. very detailed plan and then squared it up. Right. Incredible, isn't it? Let's go up another level. Well, you talked me through this process. Well, you, you can see yeah. quite close up that this is... A, well, it's tissue. So you're, you're so putting I'll, tissue over we, it. We're, we're approaching this in two ways. Where you've got... Um, <laughs> smaller scale flaking. What we're doing is heating an adhesive through tissue which flows underneath and allows the flakes to be pushed down and stuck. And then we can use, um, we can take the tissue off right. and the, the flaking is nice and flat right. then. And then we clear the adhesive off afterwards. 
that's that's one approach for where the flaking is fairly flat right but you've also got situations like this oh, and you can really see weird. how now we've got to try and get every single one of those big flakes down and flat right. this area here yeah was like that so we've already worked on this and the way we do that, we've got um, a tiny, it's a hot air pencil. It blows a little jet of hot air. Right. And we've got a, an acrylic dispersion, which we're carefully, Harriet's working on this at the moment, which right. she, she will just allow the, the adhesive to flow in behind the flakes, just applying it with a brush. And when there's enough adhesive in behind there, so that everything is... Um, everything is coated with the adhesive and just gently with a hot air pencil and a little probe just gently massage the flakes back down. The wow. heat's great because all the material, the oil is thermoplastic right. so you add a little bit of heat it doesn't burn, right. it just gently goes plastic and you can encourage the flakes to go flat without so, breaking them. Right, okay. If you break them they fall off. Tell me how long is this project going to take? I mean, we've been here three spaces. weeks, we've been, we've been here three weeks and we've got another two weeks. There's a, a lot more movement to it when you see it close up from, from downstairs. The, the circles and the spheres... Are well you can see some of it's easy. quite, quite um, detailed and yeah. quite drawn. Yeah. And then there are other sections where he's just responding to the textures and the shapes and being a lot more broad scale. You know, with this sort of figure here That's playing great. some form of form. Yeah. <laughs> this one canvas was prepared in a different way. Right. And we don't know why, but you can see the loss is down to a white layer. Yeah. Whereas the loss here is down to a brown layer. So would this it's done, be... it might be a different canvas. Right. Just something you didn't like. These are the invitations so you've to the private view, to the unveiling. Unveiled on Thursday the 1st of July 1954 at 4pm. Well, I, I, also when you say <laughs> unveiling, I have this image now of a gigantic curtain. Mm. But it can't have been the case. No, surely. it must have just been more walk, walking and, and, and turn around. But it would have been such a big shock because it would have been such a well, big wasn't there a change. There? Yes, that that's right. right. That's yeah. what I was going to show you. And so that's how mm. it looked pre-bomb mm. damage. So it looked very mm. sort of imposing with this dark wood panelling mm. and the light ceiling and these like little deco chandeliers. Oh, yeah, and then are. that's what happened in the Battle of Britain Day. September 1940. Yes. Yeah. So this was the brochure or leaflet that was given out, but it looks like they actually sold it. Sixpence. The sixpence. This was written by. This Ivan. was written by Ivan himself. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So these are a little bit fragile, but so that's why we kind of translated it to this handout. But it basically, he was very keen that it looked painted on the wall and part of the wall, and not look like a painting hung on a wall. Right. You know, not an enlarged picture. It's basically. A backdrop, it's part of the wall. I, I love this bit. It says the character of the whole design is dictated by four main considerations. A subject which should embrace the chief features of certain famous dance forms, a feeling of some sort of woodland setting <laughs> to act as a foil to the urban surroundings. I love this about figures right, well, look, ranging right across the span of history. It's very complex. It's fantastic. And what was it? number four? The size. This, this great space might been expected to call for figures of greater size but it was felt that this would have been suitable in a concert or lecture hall where the audience would remain static. In this case the dancers want to feel that they are the chief occupiers of the hall and they're not being dwarfed by a race of superhuman gods looking down upon their little antics. <laughs> That's brilliant. brilliant. All the artists would think Isn't that, that wonderful? Exactly. <laughs> it's great. And then he said alternatively, alternatively to get in all the dances suggested would have meant covering the walls with Lilliputian figures, mm -hmm. making a too busy and insignificant background for a crowded floor. So yeah. very keen not to take away from the dance floor. The dance was the most important thing. Mm -hmm.